on Bring In Haywood Galbraith. He's an award-winning photojournalist and one of the few members of the black press who covered the O.J. Simpson murder trial from actually inside the courtroom. Uh, Haywood, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you all for having me this evening. You were in the courtroom, as I said, almost every day covering the trial. You took more than 20,000 photos. We're going to show some of those in just a moment. When the Dream Team was sowing the reasonable doubt seeds with the jury, could you tell? Uh, yes, I, I could tell. And, and uh, I need to correct you. It wasn't almost every day. It was, it was every, every day. day? It was 15 months. Okay. So what was the reaction to the jury um, uh, w with some of those moments? What stands out in your mind? What were some of those moments? Yeah, you know, one of the things was I, I remember when uh, they had a uh, criminologist on from uh, that worked in the lab, of LAPD lab, Colin Yamanuchi, and I hope I didn't chop up his name. Uh, he, got, he got up there and he testified that he'd only been there a few years and the evidence bag containing O.J. Simpson's blood came in and it was unsealed. Uh, he said he knew it was a high profile case. He did not want to make a mistake. So he went there. Uh, he went and spoke to people that had been in the lab for 11, 12 years. And they all said no bag had ever came in. And and so that was one of the seeds that they sowed that something was wrong here with the evidence. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was other things about the glove. You know, they, they, the, the whole issue that the, he put, he threw the glove down beside his house and they made an issue that he threw the glove down beside his house, but they made another part that, okay, he put all the clothes in the bag and took them to Chicago. And any reasonably thinking person would say, well, if you're gonna put all the clothes in a bag and take them to Chicago, why would you take the time to go down beside your house and throw a glove down. It doesn't make sense. And so th that's a couple of things that stand out that the jury was listening. And one of the things that comes up is most people that watched it on television thought mm -hmm. they knew what was going on in the courtroom. But as I explained to people, you only saw what that camera let you see. You didn't see what was, you didn't see how the jury was reacting. You didn't see how the defense was reacting. You didn't see how the prosecutors were reacting when the camera was focused on the person on the witness stand. That and is so true. We did jury... not, yeah, we did not get to see the jury at all in any of this. But right. I want to talk a little bit about the cultural significance of this trial, specifically in the black community. Can you speak to that? The black community, O.J. Simpson was always a hero. And I would say in the older black community, he is still a hero. The problem we have is that I speak sometimes to young men and young women, black and white, that wasn't even born during the O.J. Simpson double murder trial, that are adamant that he's guilty. Uh, and even some of the jurors now uh, feel that way. But for the most part, black Americans, even though they felt he sold out, they understand that law enforcement in America treats black people differently than they treat white Americans. That's all it is to it. Uh, and until we get complete equality across the board, uh, black Americans are always going to be suspicious of mm -hmm. law enforcement, especially white law enforcement, when we've got videotape evidence of white law enforcement officers, minutes and minutes of it, killing black Americans unjustly, and they are found not guilty and then you get a black American is found guilty and there's not even hardly any evidence as has been the nature of America since its inception and before its inception in regards to dealing with black Americans. Mr. Galbraith, thank you so much for sharing some of those photos. They really do bring back memories of what we saw. Thank you again. We appreciate it. Thank you it. for your time this evening. You too. We also have a statement tonight from Kim and Fred Goldman. It reads, the news of Ron's killer passing away is a mixed bag of complicated emotions. And it reminds us that the journey through grief is not linear. We will continue to advocate for the rights of all victims and survivors, ensuring our voices are heard both within and beyond the courtroom. Thank you for keeping our family and most importantly, Ron, in your hearts for the last 30 years.